Hello and welcome. You are currently looking through a Vortex Razor HD Gen 1 5 to 20 by 50 with an EBR3 MRAD reticle. You are currently looking at a power transformer that's about 35 yards away. Now, the scope itself only has a parallax adjustment down to about 40 yards, so that has a slight effect on the clarity that you can witness. It being a bright sunny day, it does help that. But right off the bat, you're going to see that this scope at 20x suffers from some chromatic aberration. That is the purple fringing at the edge of the high contrast areas. That is one of the biggest weaknesses of this scope, and I wanted to show that off first and foremost. Again, you can see some chromatic aberration here on the high contrast areas. This is part of that same power pole, and I wanted to try to illustrate that as best as I could. So here I'm actually adjusting both the parallax, the focus on the camera, and the rear ocular adjustment to try to get everything as clearly in focus as possible to show off that even though there is some chromatic aberration, the glass on the scope is still very sharp. So here you have the same power lines at about 35 yards. The tree line behind it is between 50 and 70 yards, and that big power tower out in the distance is about 700 yards. I also increased the magnification to 10x. So for the rest of the video, it'll be 5, 10, and 20x. The eagle-eyed viewer amongst you would notice that the reticle is slightly moving up and down when I take my fingers off of the scope to adjusting it. The reason for that is I have about a 35 pound weight hanging off the bottom of my tripod to try to eliminate some harmonics. So every time that I film with a scope greater than 5x at distance like this, even the slightest amount of movement on the tripod or the scope or the base that I'm using will show up drastically in video. The weight, even though it has some sort of residual effect on it, is still a lot better than if it didn't. This is the exact same transformer that you saw earlier, but during twilight and during the rain. I figured it was a great opportunity to showcase how this will work in lower light. This is still not what I would consider pitch darkness, but it's still pretty dim outside. A lot, a lot dimmer than it was during daylight hours, obviously. But there's heavy rain, and these are roughly the same distance power towers as the last one we looked at. And I just wanted to show that this thing, even under low light, thanks to that huge 35 millimeter tube and 50 millimeter front objective, still lets in a ton of light and allows for a very sharp picture. Here we are at the 50 yard range. This is before COVID shut down all of New York. We're going from 5x to 10.5x, and then from 10.5 to 20x. That is the jump that I did for basically everything in this video, with the exception of the tracking test that you'll see at the very end. Uh, again, you'll notice on the high contrast areas, there is some significant chromatic aberration. That has partly to do because, one, it's a high contrast environment, and it is still pretty bright out. However, once I back it off of 20x, it goes away. Literally, the second you cross it into the 19 or 18x threshold, it completely dissipates so it's not the end of the world but it is something that you will notice on bright sunny days with high contrast items another thing you might not notice is uh, illumination uh, this scope does have illumination on it but it is just weak so weak that if it's brighter than twilight out you're not going to really see it What you're looking at now are two power towers and a big stone building. The first tower is at about 170 yards, the second one's around 330, and that building is out at 680 yards. You'll notice I am playing around with the parallax, and again we're going to start from 5x up to about 10x, and then finishing off at 20x. What's great when you're looking through a scope of this quality is you could very easily see the Mirage. Now, I do go over it a little bit later in the video with a little bit better illustration of this, but just take note of how much everything is moving from the heat in the air. So I adjust the parallax so that the first tower is clear, and then I adjust it until that bar right in front of the buildings is as sharp as I can get it. 
Now, keep in mind, I am looking through my camera, which is looking through the scope, and it does get a little bit tricky to get it 100% perfect. I do believe that if I was looking through it with my bare naked eye, it would be better. However, if I was to go from my bare eye back to the camera, it wouldn't be 100%. So uh, everything, everyone's eyes are different, and every camera is different. So it wouldn't be a fair judgment of that. I had noticed this flag off to the distance, about 100, 150 yards away, and I saw it moving in the wind and just thought it'd be cool to take a video of. Now we're looking at a different power tower. This one's at about 600 yards away. It's hard for me to really judge distance on this because my rangefinder doesn't pick it up all too well. But from what I can calculate with Google Maps, it's about 600 yards. And that light pole on the back behind it is a little bit farther than that, probably about 650 yards to 700 yards. So what I do now is I back off the parallax, so this way we're technically looking at the air. I back it out to about three quarters to half to about a quarter. The whole reason for this is so that we can take a look at the Mirage. The Mirage will tell you what the wind is doing and allow you to make a much more precise shot at distance, especially if you don't either A, have a spotting scope, or B, have a spotter. Hopefully you can understand the importance of having clear quality glass and the ability to adjust your parallax. This way you could read the wind a little bit better. Next, I go through the tracking test, and there is a little discrepancy in there. I try to illustrate it with text best I can because I can't talk over myself. We'll talk about it more afterwards. We are currently at 5x, 10, 8, 15, 20. It darkened because that's how this works. The higher the magnification, the smaller the internal iris, and thus the less light that comes in. Plus we're in a very dimly lit room, so to get proper brightness at 20x, it's going to be overexposed at five and well, basically anything under 20. I incorporated some dots on the target. Uh, I can barely make it out on the camera screen, but through the scope, you can clearly make out all the lines. Everything's written out in Sharpie and not a very fine tip Sharpie at that. It was a little bit dull the tip, but you can, I know you can make out most of that. And this is at like 35-ish yards. So the resolution is certainly there on the scope, uh, less so on the camera. So very similar to the SWFA 20X, we have a slight discrepancy on the windage. It's favoring the right-hand side of the line. If I go left, we're gonna be slightly off. If I go right, we're gonna be even more so off. So it's, just keep that in mind, we're gonna be slightly to the right of all of the hash marks. Keep in mind that the spacing looks absolutely perfect on the elevation and just ever so off on the windage, or at least in my eyes, it looks off. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So elevation's perfect. Windage seems like it's off by about 0.1 to almost 0.2 of a mil which isn't the best, but let's turn the windage back to zero. One, two, three. So that's, that's where our zero was. And you could see that we're about 0.1 of a mil off. So at that point, the windage to the far right at three mils out was 0.1 of a mil off. But now we're 0.1, clearly more, more on the right-hand side of the line than we were at the beginning. So let's go three mils left, one, two, three, and we're again about 0.1 of a mil off. So maybe there's just something up with the way everything's lining up, but that seems to be a pretty good zero. All right, so that seems to get pretty damn good. Let's continue up with the elevation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the elevation adjustment is flawless, absolutely perfect. 
Again, with the windage, we're about 0.1 of a mil off to the right. On this particular scope, we're about 0.1 of a mil off to the right on eight mils of elevation. But keep in mind, we are favoring that right-hand side line to, from the beginning. All right, so now I'm going to reset this to zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is perfect. So just for shits and giggles, I'm now going to go down. One, two, three, four, and we are out of elevation adjustment on the scope itself and on the reticle. So we just did a full sweep of 13 mils and it looks to line up perfect with the, with the reticle. One last thing I forgot to showcase was the illumination, which down here in this dark environment, it actually does show up. And it's not the clearest, as you can see at the bottom, it, it, it fuzzes out a little bit, but it isn't half bad. You didn't think I was really gonna leave you without an eye box test now, did you? We're looking at about a 200 yard tree. Distance shouldn't really matter. In fact, I could probably do this against a, a wall, but I wanted to give a little bit more depth and color illustration as to what it would look like if you were slightly askewed off of perfect center. So from 5X, we're gonna jump up to now to 10X. At 5X, it's actually really open, it's great. 10X is actually not that much farther off. It does get a lot more narrower than the 5, obviously it's gonna do that with any scope, but it's still very usable. And we're about to jump up to the 20X, but just keep in mind one thing. Even though uh, the eye box does change dramatically as far as the higher the magnification, the tighter it gets, keep in mind that your eye relief does not change. And that's the most important part. Because when you're behind a precision rifle, everything is tailor fit so that you get behind that gun at a certain position, at the exact same time, repeatability should always be priority. Consistency is the key to accuracy. You're gonna get behind your gun and you're gonna look through the scope and you're gonna go from 5X to 20X and nothing's gonna change. It's gonna be great. And there you have it. So I've had the scope for a while now and I've been not necessarily procrastinating about putting on this video, but I wanted to make sure I had everything down pat for it. I really wanted to get this thing out to the range out that my friend allows me to go to with him out to 500 yards and get some video on that. But unfortunately due to the coronavirus and quarantine and everyone not knowing what the hell's going on, that's been scrapped. Uh, it's not to say that you will not see video of this thing at 500 yards or better on an actual range. I do plan on doing that, and I'm gonna to touch base on that a little bit later on. But for right now, what do I think about this? I think it's great, especially for the price point that I paid for it used, of course, uh, about 900 bucks. But that was a pretty good deal. Uh, it did come with the rings, everything you see here, if you watch my unboxing video, you'd know that. Uh, it was, however, also very heavily used, lots of ring marks all over the place, a couple of bang up marks here and there, but I don't mind some beauty marks on my optics or rather anything that I own for that matter, because if it's not beaten up a little bit or at least shows signs of love here and there, then it hasn't been used properly or it hasn't been used at all. I enjoy I enjoy having things that have wear marks on it because that means that it's, it's been through the ringer and this scope clearly has. Uh, there's only two minor discrepancies I have with it. Uh, I, I mentioned both in the video. The first is the chromatic aberration at 20x. Uh, it is noticeable, however, not all the time. It's clearly not there in some shots, but in some, but in other shots, it, it is there. The second is the illumination, which I'm gonna show you right now. So there's 11 power adjusters on this, one to 11 with offs in between. And you know, it doesn't show up during the day at all, really. Uh, and the first five or six are basically useless unless you're uh, unless you're running night vision. I'm pretty sure that you could run this with night vision and you'd be fine. But it's not just the fact that it's dim. It also doesn't fill out the reticle very clear, cleanly. But I'm nitpicking at that point. The reason why I don't really care much about illumination on a high higher magnification scope like this is you're most likely going to be shooting during the day or in twilight. And as you saw earlier in the video in darker conditions, it still lets in so much light that you could see not only the reticle, but everything else that you're looking through perfectly fine. And in, in situations like that, I'm sure you'd see the 
illumination at its maximum brightness. But it does flare out a little bit. It, it's a little messy. It's nowhere near what modern brand new scopes are, but it's it's okay. But I still think it's the weakest link of this. And I want to touch on that because this thing actually has a lot of rivals. Now, this is brand new, about 1600 bucks, 15, 1600 bucks. Do I think it's worth it? I don't know. That's that that's the real tricky part because, and Vortex has done this to themselves. The new Gen, uh, Gen 2 PSTs are phenomenal. And I'm gonna use the reference of the Razer HD Gen 2 1 to 6 and the PST Gen 2 1 to 6 that I reviewed back to back. And you're getting a lot of scope in the PST for a third the price of the Razer. And that's that's a lot. That's a huge divide. My same friend that I go to the range with out to 500 yards has a Gen 2 PST 5 to 25. And I, I, I've been able to, I've looked through it once and I was blown away by how good it was. And it comes to a point where what's better, what's more ideal. I can't answer that for you. Only you can. You have to know what you want and what you're looking for. I think, however, this has something going for it that the PST Gen 2 does not. And that's just cool factor. I look at this and I just want to feel it. I want to use it. I want to turn the knobs. I want to hear perfection and see it. Plus the coloration on this is just fantastic. It looks gorgeous. You, you need 35 millimeter rings. That's a downside for sure. And if you don't have them, you got to buy it. You know, if, there, if this was a 34 millimeter tube or a 30 millimeter tube, yeah, you'd, ha you'd probably have some lying around. But 35 millimeter is a little bit uncommon. That's a slight miss on their part as well. But this is an old generation scope. But yet, Vortex still makes this brand new. Even though they have the Gen 2 Razer HDs, they still produce the scope brand new today. So that's got to be saying something. That's got to say that, hey, you know what? Vortex believes in this optic well enough to produce it brand new in box today, 2020. I forgot what league it is, but I've seen long-range precision shooters still using Gen 1 Razer HDs, just like this one, out to a couple thousand meters. I think uh, shooters doing the one-mile mark. They're still using these. Not all of them, but there's still one or two. And that's saying something. It's phenomenal. You could read the wind with it really well. You can see clearly through it. Everything on it is, as far as adjustability goes, everything on it's great. Uh, the one discrepancy I had with the windage during the tracking test... I illustrated it with some text. There was an extra click after I had counted off 10 on my first mill right. I don't know if that was something, if that was another click that maybe I had missed or maybe something settled. I, I'm not too sure, but it seemed to pretty much rectify itself. And the reason why I think it went up 0.1 of a mill up at 8 mils was this wasn't 100% level. I get it to about 95%, which is in real world shooting scenarios probably better than what most people can do anyway. But as far as the tracking goes, I think it's great. I think it has no problems whatsoever. One nice thing I also like about this and using it is this rubberized magnification ring. Most new scopes are not rubberized. Most of them are hard anodized aluminum and they're smooth. I mean, yes, there are some, some ridges, there, are, there is some narrowing on it, but particularly with the Gen 2 razors, they don't have a rubberized coating. You'd have to get a throw lever for it. And honestly, for this, this is... It's about 180 degrees out to, to get full rotation from minimum to maximum magnification. But it's so light and you get so much purchase on it that it's not really an issue. All in all, I think this is a phenomenal scope. For the price I paid for it, it's an absolute no-brainer. Would I spend 1600 or so? It's tough. It's tough. There's a lot of competition, especially between this and the, the Gen 2 PST. I can't wait to review my friends because I'm really going to enjoy comparing that to this literally siblings big brother little brother or sister you know, whatever you want me to give you an answer of whether i'd buy this or not well I, I did buy it but i bought it at a very good price would i buy it brand new it's really tough to say i i gotta get my hands on the pst gen 2 to know if i'd go that way or this way but just look at this thing it has that second type of cool that you just can't help but admire kind of like james dean or a vintage porsche it's because of that that I'd probably get this over the Gen 2 PST. But if I'm looking to save a couple hundred dollars or get slightly better performance, it's gonna it would probably change my mind a little bit. But as far as this thing, currently, I really, really, really dig it. And I'm very happy that I bought this. This is not gonna go anywhere. Thank you very much for watching. See you again next time.